Happy noon day, happy noon day, happy noon day. Uh, so glad to see you, those present in the sanctuary, and then those who are out there in cyberspace. We are glad to have you. And this is our first time to say <clears throat> happy new year. The Lord God be with you. Won't you join us today? Please stand. We are going to work on nothing but the blood. And it kind of bounces along. What can wash away my sin? Nothing, Nothing but, but the blood, blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing, Nothing but, but the blood, blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my pardon, this I see. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my cleansing, this my plea. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing can for sin atone, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Not of good that I have done, nothing but the blood of Jesus. All oh, precious is the Lord. That makes me white as snow, no other found I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. That's wonderful, we're at the last. This is all my hope and peace, nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fault I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Wonderful. Thank you. You did a good job. Brother Harvey, won't you come and lead us in our scripture at this time? I know it was the blood, I know it was the blood, I know it was the blood for me, for me, for me, one day when I was lost, he died upon the cross, I know it was the blood for me. Everybody knows. Scripture. Good afternoon, St. John. Good afternoon. Today's scripture will be taken from the New King James versions of Psalms number three. And it reads, beginning with the seventh verse, Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for you have struck all my enemies in the cheekbone. You have broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Your blessing is upon your head. <coughs> May the Lord have a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his holy word. Amen. 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 And now we come for those that we have on our prayer list. Hospitalization, Brother mm -hmm. Austin Patrick in Integris. Recently released, Sister Betty Mason, Brother Levy Arthur, Sister Sharon Washington King. Our bereavements, Reverend Marcus Carruthers, our tech man. It keeps us looking good out there to you. Uh, lost his cousin, Theo Carruthers, uh, in Altus, Oklahoma. Services are pending. Brother Roy Piggy's sister, Gwendolyn Karen Hunt, passed. Her services are January 7th at the First Baptist Church, 11 a.m. in Crescent. Asking prayer for Belinda Spikner, Tyler Phillips, uh, Jessica Higgs, uh, niece, uh, Shetra Snowball, uh, Janice Dugar's niece. Uh, her house burned on Christmas Day, and the day after Christmas, her husband died of a heart attack. So we certainly want to keep her in yes, prayer. Sir. Richard Gardner, 
Vicki Johnson, the sister of our First Lady, uh, Jackie Jemison, uh, is in ICU. All right, and we are in continual prayer for President Joe Biden, Vice President Kamala Harris, our local and state government, our governors, and that sort of thing, that God will speak in their heart Amen. in 2023, <clears throat> and that they will act on behalf of the people to make us a better world and a better people. COVID-19 victims and their families, and COVID is still real. And so we still do our things to protect ourselves mm -hmm. and our families. Our military forces and their families, uh, peace uh, to end the war in the Ukraine. May God speak in the hearts of all of those involved that they might surrender to the will of God and the bloodshed might stop. The end to violence and hatred in our own nation. Rachel. May we understand that we are one. Many people, but one in Jesus. Amen. At this time, our first prayer, Brother Enoch Nichols. And we thank all of you for being faithful and coming as we start this new year. Mm -hmm. Amen. Father, we come to you again this noonday hour, first of all, thanking you for your many blessings, thanking you for allowing us to see this day and to bless us to meet under this canopy to give thanks unto you. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you bless St. John, bless the leadership of St. John, bless everyone that goes to make up the leadership and the workings of this church. Bless us, Heavenly Father, as Q members, that we would stand up and be a beacon for you. Mm -hmm. Forgive us of our sins and our shortcomings. Give us a good day today and a better day on tomorrow. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Let the amen. church say amen. 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 And we certainly need prayer. At this time, our own brother, Reverend, William Miles will come and lead us in our second prayer. Brother Miles, please. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Let us pray. All the God you have brought us to and through the year of 2022. Right. And now, Lord, we come before you mm -hmm. because you are worthy of our praise yes, to thank you for 2023. Yes, sir. Thank you. Lord, we desire to do a much better job, oh Heavenly Father, in worshiping and praising you in 2023 yes, sir. than we did in 2022, Lord. We take not for granted your multitude of blessings that you are sending to each and every one of your children. Mm -hmm. And those, oh Heavenly Father, you desire to be your children. Mm -hmm. Let the words go forth, oh Heavenly Father, that will convict us and convert us, oh Heavenly Father, to worship you in spirit and in truth. Not just on a weekend day, but every day you're worthy, worthy, worthy of our praise yes, Lord. through your son, Jesus, yes. Lord. We pray for the first family. We pray for every family, mm -hmm. particularly those that are going through now mm -hmm. with bereavement, mm -hmm. with sickness, O oh, Heavenly Father, as we plead the blood of Jesus over their lamb lives, so we know that the blood Yet heals. Mm -hmm. The blood yet sets free. Yes, sir. The blood will order our steps according to your word, not our word. Mm -hmm. But thou will, will be done. Mm -hmm. We will give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. Mm -hmm. You forgive us, dear Father, of our sins. Mm -hmm. Give us clean hearts, renew the right spirit, and let us be all all that you call for us to be, Lord. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, sir. We thank you for this gathering, Lord. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your walk with you, Lord. We thank you, oh, Heavenly Father, for your multitude of blessings. Mm -hmm. Now continue to keep and hold, Lord, as we put all, not some, but all of our trust mm -hmm. in you. Yes, sir. For your word did say trust in the Lord. Amen. With all that are lean not to our own understanding, mm -hmm. but in all other ways acknowledging you, knowing that you will direct our path. Amen. Oh, Father, as we go forth, mm -hmm. not of ourselves, but in your Son Jesus' name, we pray for the furtherance of this experience. We pray for our teacher today, Lord. We pray for each home that's represented and those that are in we can call sight land. Mm -hmm. Bless them, Lord. Hold them. Keep them, Lord. And let him have a True faith, O oh Heavenly Father, of receiving all that you have to offer to us. And we might walk, serve, and worship according to your will, Lord. This is our prayer in your Son, Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I've been wondering where could I insert, uh, but uh, any place is a good place. We receive a lot of gifts at Christmas time, don't we? Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Everyone say, yeah, 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 yeah. Amen. All right. Um, be sure, as we think about entering 2023, mm -hmm. that we give the gift of forgiveness. Yes. Forgiveness. Good word. Forgive ourselves. Good word. Forgive others. Mm -hmm. Our wives, our husbands, our children, mm -hmm. our extended family family, the relatives who are hard to deal with, our enemies, forgive, give the gift of forgiveness. Amen. And I'm the first one to admit, having worked with uh, children at risk and in mental health, you may not be able to ride them in your car. They may not be able to come to your house, but give the, the gift of forgiveness. You let go. And let God, and your life will be richer and fuller. At this time, it is my pleasure to present our teacher of the hour, Dr. Lawrence C. Kirk. All right. All right. Amen. Amen. Let the church say amen. 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 You're right about it. All right. <laughs> what you say, Dave? <laughs> you got to have faith. You can't believe it's all over. <laughs> yeah. Dave, if anybody can do it, you can do it. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> all right. All right. We thank God for you uh, today and as we. I look at this uh, brand new year, mm -hmm. I thought it would be good that we talk about you know, knowing the future, knowing the future. There's a passage of scripture found in the book of James in chapter 4 that we're going to look at today. But before we get started, I want to uh, uh, send out this message as far as our um, 6 o'clock p.m. Uh, Bible study. The This coming Sunday we will have in the bulletin. Right, Reverend Dawson. Yes, sir. We're going to have a survey that's going to be in the bulletin, and if you would please uh, fill that out, and you don't have to put your name on it. It's just some questions we're trying to do as we prepare to get ready for our uh, 6 p.m. Bible study prayer service that we need to know from you, and because we're preparing a good program for you, but we just need some input from you. Thank so you. if you would you. make sure and fill that out. Uh, also, those of you who are on uh, uh, Facebook, I think we have it on our web page yes. too. We're working on getting yeah, all it's, of that it's out on there, there yeah, too, it's on there. so they can yeah. let us know. All that information is important for us to to uh, uh, gather that we can better serve you. Mm -hmm. So you all bear with me today. I'm trying not to be under the weather. I've got some stuff going on upstairs in my head here. I'm trying to help him uh, battle here, but uh, we're going to go through this. Knowing the future, knowing the future, 
Uh, nobody knows the future. You know, nobody knows the future. We don't know. We think we know the future. We think we, we, we know what we would like for the future would be. Uh, you know, uh, you know, a lot of people want to uh, say, well, when this happens, I'm going to retire at this certain age, right. and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to be able to do that. But we really don't know, do we? No, we really don't know. Uh, many of us football fans sit here with great expectations, and Monday night football, a young man, 24 years old, had that tragic um, incident. Now, now, 23, 24 years old, something like that, thinking of long uh, career, something like that tragic to, could hit and with uh, like not knowing. Uh, mm -hmm. So we, we don't know. We don't know the future. So I want to share with us, since we're in this new year, 2023, uh, this is something that we can look at and maybe uh, help our way of uh, addressing uh, the future and how we look at it, things to do. You know, when you make it plans, uh, you know, when people in the business world, uh, the corporate world, you know, they get ideas and they analyze them, they use forecasts and develop and we want to implement them and then we're going to evaluate and, you know, the planning process. Well, all of that stuff can work, you know, but uh, one of the best things I've seen is uh, Pastor Jimson talks this all the time. Robert Burns said this, he's a Scottish poet. The best laid plans of mice and men often go awry, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can make the best plan, right. mm -hmm. best future, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, you think you're preparing for it, things, and something could happen to turn that mm -hmm. <laughs> all around, you know, right? You know, it's just something about it, you mm -hmm. can just, you say, where did that come from? Mm -hmm. well, we can make those best plans. I, I did this, I, uh, you know, I dotted all my eyes and Crossed all my T's and looked like everything was just right. Then all of a sudden something Thanks. comes in yeah. and just throws everything off course. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I think about, you know, Nick, we think about our health issues and things like that. We think that we're going to be this and that. And yeah, we, yeah. we don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, many of our members now are going through some health challenges, uh, even right now. And so we look at, what about the future? One thing I'm, I want to keep in mind, because those of us living in this post uh, pandemic, not well, folks, we're still in it, but you know, two, three years into it, we've got several things mm -hmm. going on. What is the future going to be like? Well, the Bible helps us mm -hmm. in a lot of things, and those of you who are watching also and listening, we're trying to get together our plans for our uh, Bible study. I'm trying to make plans of what we're going to be talking about. One of the things has often been, you know, we look again at the book of Revelations, and that's something we're, mm -hmm. we're thinking about looking at too. Uh, but uh, uh, just the Bible itself and how it relates uh, to our life and that we're in now. And I think we can, we can learn from the Word of God is so uh, important that it, it, it covers every issue of life. And when people say the Bible is irrelevant, it's not relevant mm -hmm. right at all. Yeah. That, that's not true. Mm -hmm. it, it speaks to us. It speaks to us. And we, if, if we're going to be good Bible students, we need not just hear the word, but we also need to uh, obey the word yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so let us look at this here today. First of all, James chapter 4, if you've got your Bible, if you don't, I'm going to have it printed here on the uh, screen. Okay. I want you to look at that. James chapter 4, verses 13 through 17. James chapter 4. Verses 13 through 17. Well, first off, we need to look at the book. The, the book is, when we look at background, the book, James. Well, James, the author here, is the half-brother of Jesus Christ. Right. Mm -hmm. He's the half-brother of Jesus Christ. And when we say half-brother, we, we say that because of Joseph and Jesus being born of the Spirit of God. So we, we look at his heavenly father. Uh, immature, but he's a half brother the uh, mother Mary, and so we know that we know something about James. James is a he was a very influential person during the um, Jerusalem Council that we'll find in the Book of Acts, chapter fifteen. When you look at Acts chapter fifteen, it was James who was one of the strong leaders. 
uh, when it came to the Jerusalem Council, deciding who could be uh, a Christian, you know, because there was this great debate whether you had to become a Jew first before you became a Christian. They were warning, they were warning the Gentiles to be circumcised mm -hmm. before they could be uh, part of the Christian movement. But it was James and Peter, uh, those guys that were very influential in this deciding and showing from the word of God those who qualify uh, to walk in the ways of the Lord. And so we know something about him being the uh, half-brother of Jesus. He was a leader. He didn't believe in Jesus uh, at first because the Bible tells us his family thought he was a lunatic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but after the resurrection, uh, they believed. And so we know something about that. Those of you who uh, just come in, I want to make sure you get a handout that we have in the back there. We have a little uh, informational sheet on the book of James, just some questions and uh, fill in uh, for you that will help you as you study uh, the book of James. Now, this book has is, is often been called the New Testament book of Proverbs of wisdom or whatever because it gives some good insight into Christian living. Yes. Into Christian living. How one should live as a Christian. The audience, of course, was those first century uh, believers then, which spoke to the church uh, there in Jerusalem and to Gentiles as well. And so it was teaching some principles of what faith and how one should live out their faith. You say you have faith. Well, what does that look like in the everyday world? Yep. And James provides that information for us uh, in reading that. He talks about several things. There are several subject matters. He talks about the tongue. Remember James talking about the tongue? This little member in our mouths and how much destruction they can do. Mm -hmm. He talks about favoritism. He talks about favoritism and uh, how one favors one over the other. And there are several other topics that we can find in the book of James. But here in today's uh, passage, chapter 4, he's dealing with this thing about, uh, I guess, uh, you know, leaving God out of our plans. Leaving God out of our plans here. And so we want to look at that. First off, I'm going to read it from King James Version. James chapter 4, verses 13 through 17. And it reads this way. It says, Go to now, ye that say today, or tomorrow we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Of course, this is King James Version speaking. In other words, kind of modernize that. We're going to be there a year and we're going to buy and sell and we're going to earn profit. Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow. He said, you don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. That's basically it. You don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. Mm -hmm. I, I, I imagine that young man that had that accident Monday, he didn't know that was going to happen that night. Mm -hmm. He was going to clear out a whole stadium. Mm -hmm. And that the NFL has been faced with something they've never been faced with before in their life. Mm -hmm. but they didn't know. We didn't know that. We didn't know. None of us knew that. Right? And so it says, uh, for what is your life? Mm -hmm. It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. For that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, mm -hmm. we shall live mm -hmm. and do this or that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But now ye rejoice in your boastings. All such rejoicing is evil. Mm -hmm. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him, it is sin. Now, I've got some uh, points that I'm going to bring out of this, but I just want us to look at the overall picture here, talking about the future and what we're going to do and say. You know, the old folks used to say, if it's the Lord's will, <laughs> right? Yes, if it's the Lord's will, that, that's, that's where we, when we see in chapter 4 here, that's basically what they were saying. Uh, if it's the Lord's will, Carol, that's, that's what's good. If it's the Lord's will, we got to uh, put God in everything. Mm -hmm. we, you know, really, we got to put God in everything. 
And think about that. If if, if I'm making plans out uh, what I'm going to do, I've got to include God in it. Yeah, yeah. Because that's really the determining factor anyway. It's not me, a uh, mm -hmm. decision on my own, but it's based upon the Lord. Now, as we look at this, I want you to see here in the Eugene Peterson's message translation, how it reads here. It can maybe help you a little bit understand that. It says, now I have a word for you who brashly announce, <laughs> uh, those who brashly announce what they're going to do. Today at the latest, tomorrow, we're off to such and such a city for the year. We're going to start a business and make a lot of money. You don't know the first thing about tomorrow. <laughs> You're nothing but a wisp of fog. There you go. Hmm. Catching a brief bit of sun before disappearing. Yes, sir. Yeah. Instead, make it a habit to say, if the master wills it, and we're still alive, we'll do this or that. As it is, you are full of your grandiose selves. All such vaunting self-importance is evil. In fact, if you know the right thing to do and don't do it, that for you is evil. Is evil. Well, this point number one I want to make here is avoid the mistake of foolish plans. Mm -hmm. Avoid the mistake of foolish plans. Well, the plan is constructed, you know, here we see here the people they construct today and tomorrow, you know, I'm I'm going to construct this plan. This is what I'm going to do. Um, you know, the place is chosen. Remember, he said he's going to go in such and such a city and uh, on the ground floor and make his fortune. The period was calculated. I'm going to do it for a year. You know, I can't even calculate a year. It's going to be a year. You know, if it's Lord's will, within a year's time. But he said, in a year, this is what's going to happen. Uh, it, their purpose, he even considered... Uh, uh, for going, they're going to buy and sell. They're going to retail. And then the profit is computed. He said, we're going to get gain. Uh, all of that, constructed, chosen, calculated, considered, computed, all of this in, in verse 13 is assumed by those who are speaking what they're going to do without consulting God. Yeah. We, can't, we, we, we can't know the future. Mm -hmm. We can only hope. We can only wish. We can, you know, but we, we need to make sure that everything we do. Now, what does that say about us as uh, believers? It says, uh, do we even consider God in our plans? A lot of times people don't even think about God in their plans uh, when they reach out to do something. It's always a, uh, you know, forethought, you know, after the fact or whatever like that. But I think what God is saying what I have, what I do, it all belongs to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. My time, my resources, everything I have belongs yeah. to everything. the Lord. Yes, It yes. belongs to the Lord. And here, we, we can plainly see how we can make the mistake just, just naturally assuming that I've got control over my life. Yeah. And, I, and I know a lot of us will say, well, I do have some control. I could go this way or I could do that way. Yeah, that's, that is true. But if it's the Lord's will, yeah. you know, we, we need to pray for guidance Amen. Of, of where the Lord uh, wants us to go mm -hmm. and to send us. We've got to make sure that we don't fall out of that. Plus, it helps us to get this idea of lordship. Yeah. And I think so many times we, we want... Christ to be our Savior, right? We want Him to be our Savior. We want Him to save us, yeah. but we have trouble with His Lordship over us, total dominance, total control over our lives. And the Bible tells us when we look at the children of Israel that God, He said, "You shall have no other God before." He He wants them to let them know, "I am the one." Yes, sir. I am the God that brought you out of. He, he wants that you shall have no other God before you yes, sir. in anything. Anything else, I don't worship. No little gods. I don't want any of this. I want you to totally depend upon me. Yes, yeah. And when you don't totally depend upon me, you have sinned. Yes, sir. That's what God wants us. Even in my decision making. Do y'all see the lordship in man? That, that really says a lot about 
how we need to respond to God and what we need to uh, uh, interact with God and everything we do. There's a statement here. Yeah, here it is here. I want you to dwell on this statement here. This is really a good statement. I, I, I'm sorry I can't tell where I got it, but I fell in love with while an intellectual atheist says there is no God, a practical atheist knows there is a God, mm -hmm. but lives as if he does not exist. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> but lives as if he, as if he does not exist. Mm. Are we living our lives as God as if God does not Help exist? Today, sir. Mm. As if God does not exist. Mm -hmm. Is a God, but lives as if he does not exist. You say you're a believer, but do you live as if he does not exist? And this is where God wants us. This is where the whole, whole picture comes together. This is where the whole uh, Christianity uh, falls down to the lordship of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that he's our Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I, I depend on him. For my time, my resources, I, I depend on him for everything. And I believe in him. I trust in him. I, I give him my all in all. Yes, God. And that's where God wants us uh, to be in, in our lifestyle. So we see here in this planning here that God ought to be in our plans and in our, in our uh, as we uh, uh, make plans, we need to avoid this mistake of foolish plans. You know, constructing plans without uh, going to God, or, you know, considering you know, what, what's going to happen. If, if it's, you know, if it's the Lord's will, we, we need to make that a habit mm -hmm. in our in our prayer talk, in our in our Christian Christianity talk. If it's the Lord's will, if it's the Lord's will, yeah. Mm -hmm. If it's the Lord's will, mm -hmm. and uh, some of us. From the south, we'll say in the creek don't rise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if the creek don't rise, we'll have no line to it. But thank you, but but the Lord, it's the Lord's will. Yeah, if, right. it's, if it's the Lord's will, and what does that say? I'm I'm, I'm making Him Lord of my yeah. life. Yes, sir. I'm I'm consulting in Him. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm aware of my limitations, yes, right? Sir. When, when we do that, but if not, right. I'm just making plans like I'm, you know, I'm, uh, you know, and I can do this and that, but I can't. Yes. We, we can't. I'm, I'm in the Lord's hands. I'm, you know, he, he, it's him who I consult. I, I trusted him. He's my Lord. So, you all, this year, the, two, the year 2023, if it's the Lord's will, yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> we're going to see. 2024, yes, right? Yes, and it is. Yes, we can we can faithfully yes, say that if it's the Lord's will, mm -hmm. we can we can believe that we're going to make it to 2024 if it's the Lord's will. Right. And uh, we think about how He taught us to pray, "Thy will be done." Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. So we we we've already got the tools. We've already got the know how in our prayer lives. If it's Thy will be done, mm -hmm. Thy will will be done. So. We want to avoid the mistake of foolish plans. Avoid the mistake of foolish plans. Mm -hmm. And we're in chapter, uh, uh, James chapter 4, verses 13 through 17. And so after the next one was uh, verses 14 through 16. We need to avoid the mistake of foolish presumptions. <laughs> foolish presumptions. We can presume uh, things. They here, if we look at the book of James, as he's talking to this group of believers, they fail to grasp the complexity of life. They counted on too many things going just the right way. Mm -hmm. You know, life is filled with too many variables. Mm -hmm. Life is filled with too many variables. All the lights will not be green. <laughs> you know, right? And so, you know, we, we, we you know, thinking everything's going to be just right. 
They fail to grasp the uncertainties of life. And then they fail to grasp the brevity of life. Mm -hmm. You know, I was uh, uh, just listening to uh, you know our prayer prayer list that we have, we've got people on the prayer list, young and old, who are going through uh, sickness and, and death. Uh, life is just like I said here at King David, a, a, a vapor. Mm -hmm. You're here one day, right. and I just realized, uh, uh, yeah, it's 20 years. My mom will be kept on 20 years this March. Just a just. I mean, just mm -hmm. life. Just like that. Mm -hmm. Just like that. And uh, just a vapor. So what what we need to do, whatever we do, we need to do it for the Lord now. Yeah, yeah. You know, whatever statement we're going to make on this side, we need to do it now. Yes, you sir. Know, because life is just a vapor. You know, think about it. Hundreds of years from now, nobody know our name. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. We want to leave a legacy, yes. I, I want to leave a legacy through my family and so forth like that. But we think about that. We want to make an impact. We want to do some things. And we want to live our lives as unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. Because life is so uncertain. Right. There is not, not one of us. I was uh, 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 listening to someone the other day that came down with this disease. And I mean, just... Being told that they only have so, so many months to live. Mm -hmm. Now, can you imagine the blow that that brought to mm -hmm. them because the uncertainty of life? Mm -hmm. Thinking one day on top of the world, and the next day you find out that you've got only a few more months to live. Mm -hmm. So, we need to understand that God is in control mm -hmm. and that we need to look uh, unto Him and that we don't uh, make some presumptions about what's going to happen. They fail to grasp the complexity of life. They fail to grasp the uncertainties of life. Mm -hmm. And yet they also fail to grasp the brevity of life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so many times, that, you know, foolish things that we do and uh, not, not thinking about how life is so uh, brief that we uh, mm -hmm. do some crazy things. And when we're on Foods Hill, Foods Valley, doing things that we don't think about our, our young people, uh, you know, not really looking at the, the long term of what life uh, is all about. So we need to be aware of that, uh, what God has given us here. So as we look at this new, new year, uh, again, the plans and then the presumptions. And then finally here, to avoid the mistake of foolish postponements. Foolish postponements. Homeland. In verse 17 there, James chapter 4, uh, verse 17. Now, <clears throat> and I like this because it said, if we know that the end of life is coming, mm -hmm. and if we know that it may come sooner than later, mm -hmm. we would be fools if we do not prepare. Yes, if we would not prepare. There are two areas of life <clears throat> where this is vitally important. And the one matter is salvation. Yeah, boy. Yes, when we, when we uh, people, when we come to church on Sunday and we worship our Lord and Savior, there are so many people who have the assumptions, presumptions, and plans for their life, and they've never considered eternal things. Yes, eternal. As if they're going to live forever. And this is one thing that I think the book of James here, chapter 4, teaches us that we need to, we need to think about uh, the last things. Yeah, yeah. Well, because what? They're for sure. Yeah, Death right. is, is certain. It's, right. it's sure. Uh, and as sure as we live, we're going to die. Yeah. By fact, we were born <laughs> to die. Yeah, yeah. You know, we were already on our way to the grave mm -hmm. when we were born. Yes, mm -hmm. And to rise. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So we, 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 we've got to make sure mm -hmm. that we understand all this. So salvation, when we come on, a, on any given Sunday morning, I don't know about y'all, but I can remember as a young preacher, uh, uh, Marcus, that it used to be, and I, if y'all think with me, don't, don't 
think I'm out of, I hope I'm not out of place in saying this, but I, I remember that it became a, a almost a dullness and a worship service when it came to the invitation because people were looking around mm -hmm. for somebody else. Mm. You know, they were looking around for somebody else to make a decision as if, well, did the word not say anything to you? Mm -hmm. and, and then there were those who believed that the preaching of God's word was only for those who were unsaved to make a decision time then. But you see, my friends, uh, the word of God should make us change some things. Yeah, yeah. Should make us add some things to our life, uh, take away some things that we're doing. It ought, to, it ought to impact us some kind of way. Just like today, the word of God, when it comes to uh, 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 simply saying that if it's the Lord's will, I need to add that to my uh, vocabulary yeah. uh, when it comes to my planning and my decision making in life. If it, if it be the Lord's will. Well, here in the matter of salvation, I, that, I, I cannot postpone. Uh, my decision on uh, making Jesus my Lord, because we've already discovered life is short, mm -hmm. and after death, what? <laughs> after death, that's it. Yeah. You know, I, 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 the judgment, and, I, and I'm, you know, there are some denominations, there are some, let me say, some belief, some believe that you go to a holding place and we can pray you out of there. <laughs> and no, 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 that's that's a different doctrine. Now, yeah. That's not the doctrine we teach. There's right. no, we ain't no way we can pray you out of hell. Uh, that's you right. know, that's there, right. There's no way after death. Right. That, that's it. So we need to make, uh, we need not postpone our decision mm -hmm. uh, we're going to make for Christ. Uh, and because that would be foolish. Yeah, yeah. And it, wouldn't it be foolish if I knew, uh, yeah, I, 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 there's another statement I remember saying that I got from someone the statement goes like this. It says, the hottest flame in hell is the flame of I wish I had. Mm. Mm. I wish I had. Mm -hmm. Wow. Think about that. I, I, I wish I had to listen to Pastor Jemison as he preached that sermon on salvation. Yeah. I, That's right. I, I wish I, I wish I had. Yeah. Uh, I, I wish I had accepted him then, but I thought I was going to have more time. Mm. I wish I had Right. Gone down and and uh, gave given my life over to the Lord Jesus Christ yes, on that day. I wish I had him, yeah. but I thought I was going to have more time. I was a young man, I, I, you know. Things were going good. I, I had all my health and my strength. I, w I wish I had him, yeah. but I did. I postponed. Yeah. And so avoid the mistake of foolish postponement. If we know that the end of life is coming, if we know that it may come sooner than later, we are fools if we do not prepare. Yes, sir. And somebody may say, well, I can go down there and buy me a life insurance policy. That, no, but that ain't, that's a life insurance policy. That's, that's, that's for your family. Yes, what about your, your life, yeah. your eternal destination? Where are you going? That's right. That's, that's the right. policy you need to take <laughs> to make sure you purchase with his blood. It has already been purchased by his blood. Amen. 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 So we need to think about that. That they would be a fool. And just think about it. Yes, sir. There are people today that think of the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ as foolishness. Hmm. Mm -hmm. It's foolishness. Help God. And so we see here that we don't want to be foolish when it comes to postponing what we know to be true. Yeah. And not only that, but here, this, finally here, the matter of service. And Pastor Jemison, I thought, did a great job this past Sunday yeah. about 2023 ought to be better for us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When it comes to service. Mm -hmm. we, we, we should, uh, the, we, the, you know, we, we don't want to uh, say, well, we reached the bar. No, we haven't reached the bar. That's yeah, right. We, That's we right. need to exceed the yeah, bar. Yeah. Right. That's uh, right. The Amen. level of excellence when it comes to serving the Lord. Amen. I know I'm taking a uh, revamp and looking at some things. What I want to do in my life is, if it's the Lord's will, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, to do some things for service for the Lord. But we want to do that. We want to what, what we want to do for Christ. We want to do it now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. But why? Life is short. Yeah. 
Whatever we do, do it, do it now. We need to we we need to do it now. So, uh, my friends, as we look at 2023, I think James is telling us one thing: we need to make sure that we realize that God is in control. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, of our plans. Yeah. Uh, you know that we need not uh, uh, go through life thinking that we're doing everything on our own. And then two, two pre, uh, presumptions about uh, things uh, to, to understand how life works, that we need to make sure that we fall in line with that. And then, like I said, postponement. We need not to postpone uh, things when it comes to our lives. So hopefully this year in 2023, as we open up this year with this first Bible study of of 2023, that we will look at uh, our lives. Mm -hmm. What we're going to do, the plans. Mm -hmm. Lord, if it's your will, yeah. this is what I'd, I'd like to do. I pray your will be done in my life here. Mm -hmm. Lord, help me to uh, do a better service for you. Mm -hmm. And then those of you who are watching and listening from, uh, you know, the Facebook, YouTube, if you've never ever accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, yeah, right. yeah, you need not postpone that. That's right. That's right. You That's right. You That's may, right. You may, you may be saying, "Well, I got all of 2023." Mm -hmm. Well, that young man thought he had all his life with football, and then you know, mm -hmm. six minutes within the first quarter of the game, mm -hmm. life changed. Just, Just like, like that. that. Just like that. Just like that. And so you may be wondering too. And so the question goes to you, those who are listening that does not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Yeah. If you were to die in the next five minutes, where would your soul spend eternity? Good stuff. Good stuff. And so I would not postpone that. That's right. Because that is a very important question. For those of us who are still uh, uh, aware of our salvation and appreciative of our salvation, mm -hmm. I want to recommend this year as a matter of service to our Lord yes. and Savior Jesus Christ mm -hmm. that we do greater things for him mm -hmm. than we did uh, on last year. Uh, pray for God's strength right. uh, to help us achieve right. great things for the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, God just wants us to be faithful. God wants yeah. us to be available yeah. uh, to him. Uh, to do great things for him. The only eyes uh, that, you know, people see is, our, you know, what we have, the only hands and only feet, legs here, or what we can do for the Lord. And so we want to uh, incorporate all of our faculties to do the very best that we can do for our Lord here uh, in this, the Lord's church. All right, Marcus, who do we have here? Uh, so we have online uh, Miss Alberta Kendrick. Alberta Kendrick. Yes. Right next to your husband. Tell her. Yeah, yeah, okay. Right next to your husband. Yeah. We also have Dylan Ackerson Smith. Dylan Ackerson Smith. We have uh, a May Burge. May Burge. Diane Turner. Diane Turner. Deborah Williams. Deborah Williams. Emily Berry. Emily Berry. Charles Shepard. Charles Shepard. Cecile Miles. Cecile Miles. Marjorie Hammond. Margie Hammond. D. Perkins Turnbo. D. Perkins Turnbo. Lovetta Hammond. Lovetta Hammond. Bruce James. Bruce James. Vernice Wannabe. Vernice Wannabe. Ernestine Terry. Ernestine Terry. Delinda Ruck. Delinda Ruck. Annie Hinton. Annie Hinton. Craig Green Sr. Craig Green Sr. Prentice Jones. Prentice Jones. Janice Jackson. Janice Jackson. Donald Watkins. Donald Watkins. Annette King. Annette King. And Sharon King. And Sharon King. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you all so much for joining yes, us. Yeah, if yeah. you've got any questions or uh, ideas about Bible study for uh, this year, just send those in in the reply section there and some ideas. We're, we're looking at maybe possibly going back through the book of Revelation. I have some ideas about that or uh, one of the Old Testament books. So, just give us uh, your opinions on some of that, and we're going to look at those and try to get a good uh, study going on. So my, you, know, you may have a, a, a question or some things you want to know more about mm -hmm. in the Bible. So we want you to ask those questions as well. And also remember to fill out the survey Thank that's you. available 
uh, for you to tell us how uh, you enjoy uh, Bible study the best and the ways that we can make it even better for you during our 6 o'clock uh, timing. And with that being said, uh, we're going to call on the pastor. He's more here today, too. Let the church say amen. 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 Wonderful message. That's on, on today. Thank you so much for the word today, yeah, yeah. Dr. Yeah. Kirk. I do remember Amen. Pastor Jackson saying to me, in his latter years, I have to make every lick count. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess that's where yeah, we are. That's right. Yeah, right. Thank you so much for reminding us. And of course, this is a great stream you have up here. I think I might preach some of it. Amen. <laughs> of course, remember all of our sick and shut-in members. I had a chance to visit uh, today with Brother Levi Arthur, yeah, yeah. who is 93 years old yeah, and, and has just retired after 75 years wow. uh, of working. Uh, and uh, he wanted me to convey to you how much you miss coming to church yeah. uh, and encouraged us to keep on keeping on until he get back. He said he's coming back. So, <laughs> so we want to be in prayer for him and for, and for his family. And then we want to be in prayer uh, for Sister Betty Mason, Dr. Betty Mason, mm -hmm. who is one of our senior members here in St. John. Uh, and she is in her 90s mm -hmm. as well and has been a superintendent in several school districts around the country, uh, and Oklahoma City in particular, mm -hmm. and she is requesting prayer. So we want to be in prayer and in support uh, of our senior members. When they've done all that they can do right. for us right. in their young, energetic years, when those years subside and they need us, then it is time for us to step up and help them. Amen? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Amen. So we want to encourage you um, to do that. The Martin Luther King Jr. celebration uh, is coming uh, in the next week or so, and we have an outstanding guest preacher that's coming to be with us, uh, the Reverend Dr. Terry Streeter, uh, pastor of the Mount Pleasant Baptist Church in Washington, D.C., uh, noted preacher, outstanding convention leader, uh, and has been a part of Progressive Convention uh, for as long as I've been a part, uh, nearly 40 years now, and has served with distinction and is a tremendous leader in his city uh, and in his church and a great preacher. And we want you to get excited about it. The W.K. Jackson Learning Academy will be presenting uh, on that Sunday, along with the youth here of St. John Missionary Baptist Church. And we're looking forward to a great uh, celebration that morning here at St. John. And then on that evening um, at St. John, we will have the traditional King celebration service here. Uh, and the emphasis this year will be on Clara Lupa. Yeah. Uh, they are uh, building a replica downtown Oklahoma City uh, of the City Inn at Katz Drug Store. Uh, they are building a replica, and of course, all of the proceeds that we raised that Sunday uh, will go towards our contribution as a community um, towards uh, the replica that they are building. We don't want the other culture doing more for us than we are doing for ourselves. Amen. Amen. And so we want to be a part of it, and we want to do it in a big way right here at St. John. Pastor Jackson, uh, during these years, worked with her, of course, during the garbage strike. Um, all that I know about the garbage strike movement, he told me. And, of course, uh, they were uh, very instrumental in that together, along with several other pastors uh, and preachers and lay people here in Oklahoma City. Mm -hmm. And so... Wherever history is being made, uh, St. John will always be on the right side of history. Amen? Yeah, yeah. Amen. So we're looking forward to that, and we're going to make our own contribution uh, to it so we can be a part of what's happening here in Oklahoma City. And then our son, who started preaching here and pastors the Prospect Baptist Church, the Reverend Dr. Lee E. Cooper, 
Junior will be the preacher mm -hmm. uh, on that Sunday evening uh, uh, for the King celebration, and we are encouraging you to come be a part of it as we celebrate the life of perhaps the most instrumental African American in the history of this country. Amen. 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 All right. Let us all stand together now as we prepare uh, to leave. With our heads bowed and eyes closed, Lord, we do thank you for the inspiring word that we have received here today. Mm -hmm. And we pray now that you would dismiss us from this place. As we go down from this place, may no hurt or harm or danger befall neither one of us. And if it be your will, oh God, mm -hmm. we pray that you would continue to bless our lives and encourage us to go a little further. Mm -hmm. yeah. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.